We talked a little bit about personalizing treatment, and, and ever since I started in this world of medicine, it's always been astonishing to me that you can say, um, here's one dose for everybody. Um, whether it was the amount of medicine they got, or the, to think that we all metabolize with uh, slightly different genes, that we, that we all metabolize medicine the same way. And then you'd look at a study that we would look at in medical school or I'd learn about, and you'd find out that 80% of people had a great result, but 20% didn't. Well, who were those people, and why didn't they have a good result, and what was going on? Trying to identify who they are really is part of what we're we're talking about today in personalized medicine, but it's not science fiction. You're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think personalized medicine, even though it's a fairly new term, and it's usually linked with pharmacogenetics or pharmacogenomics, but as pharmacists and you as a physician, you know how we try our best to personalize the therapy for patients, even though it seems like oftentimes there's one dose, one medication, one dose for all patients, right. and yet we assess what other medications the patient is taking, what other uh, conditions or medical condition the patient has in order to determine um, you know, what dose to give, what medication um, is, some of them are based on weight or age or gender, um, some of them are based on um, the, the actual um, type of condition, uh, for example, type two diabetes, may have uh, different um, algorithms that we go through. But now, adding pharmacogenetics and pharmacogenomics really adds another component to help us improve that. On average, about 30 to 60% of the drugs only have the response rate as, as we expect it to be. So of all medications, we expect them to work only 30 to 60% of the time it actually works. So that means there's a lot of uh, variations between persons to persons, and that's where pharmacogenomics has a potential to help bridge that gap so that we can get more personalized for that particular person. Now the two terms are interchangeable. Pharmacogenetics is a very individual variation of uh, differences in the genes, whereas pharmacogenomics usually refers to a broader scope of genome-wide analysis uh, that would be effective um, or affecting drug toxicity and drug efficacy, which is how drugs work. And so, um, e even though the two terms are interchangeable, I like exactly to use. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I like to use the term pharmacogenomics. Oh, it tripped me up when we opened the blood. show. Yeah, yeah, I know, I understand. So the the idea here that that we can identify a patient who would respond to one thing or another. Can you give me an example of how where that is right now? I mean, if I if somebody came into the office of a doctor where pharmacogenomics would be of value. Sure. So right now the evidence points to different grades of um, levels where we can apply in the practice. So for example, abacavir, which is a drug used for HIV infection, um, the FDA and the manufacturer and the Department of Health and Human Services have the black box warning of saying before a patient can be started on that medication, everyone needs to, be doing, needs to be getting a pharmacogenomic test. If they test positive for HLA-B um, star 5701 for that particular allele, then they must not um, be taking the medication because we have strong enough evidence to show that if patients test positive for that, they will have hypersensitivity, allergic reaction, so severe that some patients may die from it.